This is Rock Slapping Champions. Player 1, playing Alarak. We have Evil Ling. And player 2, playing Raynor. We have Rob. So let's go and have a look at the masteries. Uh, Alarak is a level 838 player. Uh, he's put a split into the Alarak attack damage and the unit attack speed. Um, generally speaking, you kind of want to go for either one or the other, uh, depending on your builds. If you're going for a mech build, you go into the unit attack speed. If you're doing an ascendant build, uh, or even that's the one you're relying on, then you can go for the Alarak attack damage uh, instead. And the uh, same thing here, the Empower Me cooldown, Death Fleet cooldown. I personally prefer the Empower Me. Uh, I think it's a it's a very, very useful mastery to have. Uh, Death Fleet cooldowns, uh, ever since the Death Fleet has been nerfed, uh, the Death Fleets are generally not as uh, as good. And again here, uh, Overcharge and Chrono Boost Mastery 24, um, 24 6. I think the minimum requirement to clear your expansion perfectly is uh, 23 7, I think. I cannot remember off the top of my head or uh, something like that. Uh, you can check it out on StarCraftTQOp.com. Um, but nowadays, I just go for a full 30 points into the Overcharge Mastery. Uh, if you use the Overcharges uh, aggressively, uh, the overcharge mastery is actually very useful. Uh, get a warp prism and make it follow Alarak, and you can actually get a lot of good value out of that. Uh, Raynor has gone for the research cost reduction instead of the dropsy mastery. Uh, Hyperion cooldown, Banshee cooldown, 50% split into each one. Uh, generally speaking, the Banshee cooldown is uh, better because it'll allow you to have Banshees 50% uh, of the game time. Uh, and he's gone for the medic heal here, which means we're expecting a, uh, a bio centric play rather than the mech attack speed which would imply that he's going for a mech centric play but this game is played on brutal difficulty uh, both players have slightly brutal difficulty and uh, now we have the first attack wave that is coming its way and Raynor has a bunch of supply depots that he has started to use to wall off the ramp but uh, this ramp is not enough so uh, he decides you know what I'm gonna send one marine out and then now there's an overcharge over Alarak. That overcharge will be able to clean up the Reapers, but these Reapers do end up taking out that one Marine that was there. And that Marine was wondering why he was the chosen one to go out and fight against those Reapers. And uh, both players are uh, are taking up the road now. Uh, Raynor has still not taken this expansion. Uh, Alarak has used his overcharge to clear out his expansion, as was probably seen a little bit earlier. And uh, yeah, there we go. So Alarak is... Uh, is okay here. Raynor, on the other hand, not quite as so. So, the first shuttle wave will be coming up uh, very, very soon. So, what Raynor is doing now is he's putting a line of missile turrets here with a bunch of marines. Now, um, this is somewhat kind of odd positioning over here. Uh, these missile turrets, if you do want to defend these uh, these uh, warp conduits, putting the missile turrets next to the warp conduit is a little bit better. Uh, because what's going to happen, Alarak is just poking over here, but what's going to happen is like attack waves are going to come in down this ramp and they're going to aggro these turrets and you're going to end up losing them because you are dealing with a shadow tech attack wave. I think that's it. Yeah, it was shadow tech attack wave. And shadow tech attack waves will have like they'll have either banshees or cyclones and they'll have reapers and they'll have battle cruisers and all sorts of these all these fun units that everybody enjoys to play against so uh, uh this is these missile turrets i don't know how long they're gonna last you see there's a small set of this okay there's one reaper over there that reaper actually ends up killing off one of these marines before uh, they before he ends up going down and this is the other thing to also note when you are playing on brutal difficulty uh, Amon's units already have 1-1 one, one attack upgrades, or 1-1-1 one, one, one at their Protoss. So 1 attack, 1 armor, 1 shield. So, you are starting at a disadvantage, so, you know, a Reaper can go 2-2-2 uh, with a Marine and actually do a lot of damage. So, uh, there we go. So, uh, I think Raynor ended up using his uh, Banshee Airstrike to take out that expansion, which is uh, the expansion proc, which is... Uh, Good, but he should have done that way, way earlier. He's taking some of his gases now, and he has a command center that is uh, coming up. Um, and uh, right now, for Raynor, there are still no orbital command centers here. Uh, one of the advantages for uh, for playing Raynor that uh, you have access to is the orbital command centers. So generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to have four orbital command centers at the start of the game, and then you may want to end at around eight for longer missions. 
And uh, the way I normally do it is if I'm fooling minerals, I I just build a few more uh, orbital CCs so that I can uh, remax my army a little bit later in the game when I end up uh, inevitably losing my uh, marines to something. So uh, you can see Alarak here is uh, going to work our way on these units. There's an attack wave that is coming up here. Alarak should be able to essentially one shot pretty much all of it. He does miss these, uh, these uh, bunch of Reapers here, but uh, he'll be okay. Uh, these missile turrets will be saved from the Reaper army that was there, and we'll end up cleaning up these shuttles. But yeah, having these orbital command centers for Raynor is really important. That's what gives Raynor his power. It allows him to remax his army almost instantly. And uh, right now, uh, there are no orbital CCs on the map, and uh, definitely only two orbital, only two command centers. Uh, you should be aiming for a lot more than that when you are playing Raynor. And then we have uh, a bunch of starports being built. You guys can probably guess what is coming up here. And uh, now, Raynor is putting down some bunkers to uh, guard his missile turrets, his very valuable missile turrets that he's put down. Is he going to fill these bunkers up with stuff? Yes, he's used a Hyperion here, which is actually good. Uh, using your cooldowns uh, aggressively is very, very important in the game, so uh, this is actually a good play. Uh, just being proactive, you know, if you have a cooldown, use it to try and deal maximum amounts of damage. Alarak is pushing over here, doesn't end up killing some of these ghosts that are there. Now they're just a bunch of Marauders and Goliaths, and those things will go get cleared up very, very quickly. And you can see here the Raynor is uh, slowly poking away on these uh, on these structures and the rest of these enemy units here. And Banshee does not have Cloak just yet. I think the Banshee Cloak upgrade uh, will be coming up a little bit later. Uh, they do not have Cloak right now, which is one of the other advantages of pushing early. If you push early in the mission, uh, your uh, the Banshees do not have Cloak. And now we can see here that there is an aggressive overcharge coming up from these war prisms. And this is why I like going for a max overcharge mastery. Uh, when you have full 3 points into overcharge, you can actually deal a lot of damage with the critical war prism, which is uh, what Alrak is doing over here. So uh, there is a small harass wave that is coming up, and now there is an attack wave here, and there are a lot of liberators, but these liberators do, and one of them goes down. Uh, first bunker goes down, second bunker goes down, third bunker will also go down because there are no marines there to start defending and now these missile turrets are going to get cleaned up by the hybrids and the rest of these enemy units. On this side, that bonus objective I think will also end up getting cleared up because uh, there is a... Uh, yeah, that bonus objective goes down uh, because Alarak was busy working away on these warp prisms because... or, or on the shuttles uh, because Raynor is busy putting down some more missile turrets. So Alarak is now in position intercepts this attack wave and starts to clear, but now Raynor's next missile, uh, missile turret is going to get focused fight down, but it does get saved by Alarak over here, so... Uh, Alarak was just luckily in position here, and he uh, uses a little bit of a destruction wave here, there's a focus fire here, there's a sea jump, but uh, these liberators are out of position to end up hitting this side, and now there's no more charge here to deal with the rest of these liberators, so he's going to push in with that. Raynor is like Raynor is trying to play aggressively, which is really good. But uh, again, no orbital CCs, so he doesn't have that pushing power. And his starports are sitting there doing nothing right now. He has, yeah, he basically, yeah, he has nothing there. He's built two starports, and he's stacked up, and he's getting, you know, he's getting his upgrades right. So he's going for his, uh, he's going for his armor upgrades. First. But he's not getting any value out of it because he's, he doesn't have any units out. So, uh, and that is why having the uh, the orbital CCs helps a lot. Uh, it just boosts up your economy so much. So we can see here he's put down uh, double tech labs onto uh, onto uh, the uh, onto these starports. But again, nothing over here. He is starting to build some static defenses on the side, but again, these these bunkers do not have marines in them, and if there are no marines in them, they are not going to be dealing a lot of damage. the The cannon thing at the top of the bunkers, you know, it, it's okay, but it's not great. It should not be relied on as pure static defense. Uh, if you do want to defend as Raynor, you need to put the bunkers, put some marines into the bunkers, and put some siege tanks in the back line and some missile turrets uh, if you're dealing with an air comp. Um, generally speaking, if you do have these bunkers, uh, you can uh, deal a good amount of damage to air units. But again, you're dealing with shadow tech here, which means inevitably you're going to have battle cruisers into the mix, and the battle cruisers with the amount of cannon in your bunkers, and you will end up losing them anyway. So uh, something else to consider. Alrak uses his uh, war prism to overcharge, and you'll be able to clean up these uh, shuttles uh, without too much of a problem. 
and now there is an attack wave that is coming up here, and it will make its way towards Raynor's base. He does have a few marines, but those marines were not in the bunker, and uh, that marine ends up going down. Now Deathly comes down to try and help this, uh, this uh, to help Raynor, but again, not without some uh, some losses. So far, Raynor has lost a total of five bunkers and nine missile turrets purely through defending uh, the uh, the warp conduits. And uh, he does send a bunch of banshees here, but these banshees will end up getting picked off very, very quickly. The, B the marine DPS is actually really high now. Now that they have uh, stim and whatnot. And uh, now we, this death fleet will be moving in over. Alrak uses an empower me. And uh, there is also a Hyperion here, so Alrak will be really, really strong right now. And he, uh, his destruction wave will deal a lot of damage. And you can see over here, he's just instantly one-shotting pretty much everything that's there. And Raynor has started to put his next defensive line on this side, while uh, he is pushing aggressively with his Hyperion. And uh, Alrak has a bunch of supplicates as well into the mix, so Alrak is going to be pretty much invincible for a while. Now, the next set of shuttles have spawned. So, we have uh, two shuttles on this side, uh, three shuttles on this side, and three, I believe, on this side as well. They will make their way towards the next set of warp conduits. Uh, Raynor's defenses are okay. There, there are the two legendary battle cruisers for Raynor, um, and he has a bunch of missile turrets over here, and he's floating a lot of gas. So uh, that's something you don't normally see, but uh, this is rock slapping champions, and you will see things that you have not seen before. And there we go. You have a mass battle cruiser Raynor that is floating 2,000 gas right now. And now that bonus objective is going to start getting focused fired down by the Reapers. The Reapers are actually uh, body blocking each other because there's so much damage out of there. Uh, but Raynor decides, you know what, I'm going to use my Valcruiser's tactical jump to, uh, to start taking out these units. And he's going to Yamato Cannon, one of the Reapers and one of the Marauders there because uh, because value. And he's just flexing on Amon right now. Now there's an attack wave that is coming up here. And uh, yeah, this shuttle will end up getting cleaned up. This side, though, unfortunately, there is nothing to deal with that, and those shuttles are going to go through. Battle cruisers for Raynor are coming, but because they have used their tactical jump, uh, and I think some of them have used their Yamato cannons as well, he's not going to be able to do that. He drops a Banshee airstrike, but the Banshee airstrike does not hit air units, and its initial barrage also does not hit air units. One of those shuttles go down, but now. Amon's army is in the player's base, and there is a battle cruiser over here that is in distress. And that battle cruiser ends up going down. Now there are a bunch more. There is a bunch of Vikings that get dropped, but again, this is a ground army, and the Vikings cannot hit ground in this mood. They were not landed either. And now there is a cloaked banshee over here that is dealing damage. So this banshee is not going to fall. It's just going to start oh, picking away. On Raynor's supply depots, and uh, yeah, Raynor does not have his orbital command centers, so uh, he does not have any detection right now. Uh, short of him building missile turret, which the ray, which the thing is not going to let him do. But now, because of that cloak, we have the first orbital command center coming out for Raynor. And as you can see, this is why Amon is good. See, Amon's a good guy over there. He got he he made Raynor get some uh, some orbital command centers. So uh, he could use a scan over there, and now we have the triple attack wave that is coming up, uh, or the triple shuttle wave that is coming up towards the central conduit, and this one is going to be really, really difficult. But Alrak does have Empower Me ready, so he will be able to deal with that, and this is the attack wave. This one is actually pretty scary as well, but uh, with Empower Me, Alrak will be fine. There's a Death Fleet that comes down, Empower Me onto Alrak, and you, just, you can see just here how much damage Alrak just does. He uh, took out 50% of the hybrids, uh, Total vitality just through one destruction wave, which is uh, which is really insane. And uh, over here, the uh, shells do end up getting cleaned up now. And uh, that banshee is still that banshee is a hero banshee. It's taken out six, it has six kills right now. And uh, I think I probably zoomed it just in time for you to see the attack upgrades. I think it was a two-two. It just got to three-three right now. And uh, the Valkyries come down, and the banshee goes back into cloak. Troll face from the banshee. And now, Raynor is still waiting for the scan. He does have energy for the scan. He gets his full army of battle cruisers over here to teach this Banshee a lesson. And he does end up uh, getting that Banshee, finally, after all that damage. And now there is another shuttle wave that is coming up. And uh, Alrak is just pushing through. He's, uh, he's okay here, just uh, handling these shuttle waves by himself. Uh, there is another bonus objective. 
that is coming up, but I do not know if the players are going to be able to deal with this bonus objective. I think there might be enough. There is a Hyperion and a Banshee Airstrike, so uh, I think Raynor might be able to handle the bonus objective now. But Alrank is pushing aggressively into this. Uh, I don't know if he's going to try and spawn camp these uh, bases, but uh, if you do have an ally that you know actually helps you, you can uh, end up spawn camping these enemy bases, which makes this mission so much easier. But now there's going to be a harass wave and an attack wave that's like spawning with this monster jacket. So this is the harass wave that's coming up. It should be a bunch of reapers and maybe a few more others. Uh, this attack wave though is uh, is kind of scary. So let's see what it is. So there's a tactical jump here from all of Raynor's army, and he's going to be able to defend this bonus objective. Uh, because they are just reapers over here but again there is an attack wave that is coming up and this attack wave is actually kind of big as well it is uh, is pretty scary um, and uh, the attack wave decides to make a detour so the attack wave has split for some reason I'm not sure why but now there's an attack wave into this side and it is going to start taking out some of Alrak's pylons and there is another chunk of this attack wave over here. There's a Banshee airstrike and a Hyperion that comes down. But because these Marauders can't hit air, they have nothing else to hit except uh, Raynor's command center and that there goes that command center right now. That hybrid dominator is going to be working way on uh, on this Hyperion. It'll, uh, do it. It'll end up getting cleaned up at some point. Alrak has uh, intercepted this side and uh, he has cleaned up that chunk of the attack wave. And uh, there is that attack wave cleaned up right now. So a total of four battle cruisers have been lost right now. Ten missile turrets, five bunkers for uh, for uh, for Raynor. Uh, there was one Robo that was actually lost. I'm not really sure where that was, and one pylon that uh, didn't end up getting cleaned up. Uh, I think that Robo may have been taken out when that attack wave hit. I didn't actually see that Robo go down, but. Uh, yeah, there we go. There is Raynor's base right now. It is non-existent. There's just a pile of rubble on the ground. Uh, but I don't know if Raynor wants to rebuild his command center. Uh, I think he's probably just going to long distance mine because this is the final attack wave. Well, this is the final shell wave that will be coming up. And uh, we have to see how the commanders are going to deal with it. So Alrak is in this position right now. He uses a overcharge onto... Uh, Onto his war prism, and now he has a bunch of ascendants out as well that are in between one shine these attack waves, so uh, or these shuttles. So he's taking out the high priority units like the battle cruisers and stuff. So that side has been dealt with, but now there are another uh, set of shuttles that's coming up here, and uh, there is another attack wave here as well, which is also going to be a problem. There's the Amatu cannon that goes down to one of these battle cruisers, but there's uh, 20 battle cruisers versus one, so this one is going to be fine. Now there is a huge attack wave here. There's an overcharge just to try and hold or a little bit, but that overcharge is not going to be enough to uh, to stop this huge number of units here. And this is going to start ravaging Alrak's base. Alrak doesn't really care. He's, he's, he's just trying to stop these shuttles from getting to the warp combat because that will cause them to lose the mission if any of these shuttles go through, I think. So there we go. That is the last shuttle done. Alrak's base has also been ravaged. And now the livers are making his way towards his main, but it doesn't really matter because those are all the shells cleared and that is GG.